This is so exciting. You are our final audience for this production of A Midsummer Night's Dream, and I'm just delighted uh, that you're here. And I'm going to talk about the kids in just a moment, um, but I have to do a few uh, orders of business. Um, emergency, which I don't anticipate. If you needed to leave in an emergency, you could go the way you came. Um, there's also an exit this way, but don't go that way. If it's not an emergency, you'll bump into, you know, fairies and things, and they get, <laughs> they get feisty about things like that. Um, uh, let's see. So there is a 10-minute intermission, and there will be concessions sold uh, out in the hallway and there are restrooms on the first floor. Um, please turn off your cell phones if you haven't, just be sure because you hate to be that one <laughs> who's like suddenly going off. Um, just double check if you don't mind. Um, and let's see, there are a lot of things going on here at the Playhouse. Oddbridge is the afternoon uh, school program, um, which happens after school and then leads into the afternoon classes uh, for young people, which is uh, really lovely. Uh, the Junior Repertory Company, if you or someone you know is between the ages of 12 and 14, they are doing Alice in Wonderland, which is very exciting, and those auditions are in December. Um, the Teen Repertory Company will have another main stage show in the spring. There will also be playwriting and some physical theater, as well as a new plays festival. And Sarcophony, uh, which is uh, a collaboration between Art Farm and Oddfellows, which is the teen circus. They are auditioning in mid-December uh, for their next show. So I should introduce myself. My name is Marcella Trowbridge. Um, I'm the artistic director of Art Farm, the director of this production, and a longtime teaching artist and director at Oddfellows. I'm just delighted. Um, again, uh, these young people, I really love them, and I'm... Um, a little sad that I won't be able to be with them more. Um, they're really a spectacular group of individuals and um, a collective. And, um, and if you've been here before, you've maybe heard me say this, but if you haven't, you know, this is a really complicated time to be alive, to be a human on this planet. And if you're not a teenager and you once were, try to remember how complicated that was and try to imagine doing that now. Um, these kids um, are just spectacular. They also hurt, you know, they're suffering and they're beautiful and they're able to hold both of those, that grace and gratitude and grief at the same time and it's kind of remarkable. And then coming together and doing something wacky like a midsummer, which is just <laughs> A really sweet, lovely, classic comedy, um, and we've just been delighted to be able to play together and be together. And they have worked so hard. They have worked so hard, and all the parents who are here, you have worked so hard to make this possible for them. And it seems to be, from what I hear, it's a lifeline. It's a lifeline for all of us to feel, to heal, and to share, and to grow, and I'm just incredibly proud of them. So um, I don't want to say too much more, other than I hope you have a really good time. Feel free to laugh. They love it, you know? They like to play with you, play with them. Um, be, you know, enjoy this. This is the final performance of A Midsummer Night's Dream! But ah, me thinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires like to a stepdame or a dowager, long withering out a young man's revenue. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. <laughs> Hippolyta, I woo thee with my sword, and one thy love doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in a different key, with pomp, with triumph, with reveling. Happy be Theseus, our renowned youth. <coughs> Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Send forth Demetrius, my noble lord. This man hath my consent to marry her. Send forth, my surrender. This man hath wished the bosom of my child. 
Thou, thou, thy son, thou hast given her arms, and interchanged love tokens with my child. Cunning hast thou flinched my daughter's heart, and turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And my gracious duke, be so she will not be here before you. I consent to marry on to Demetrius. I beg the law to put the age of Athens, and our law immediately provided in this case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, her maid, to you, your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So it's Lysander. In himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other should be held the worthier. I would my father looked but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes look with his judgment. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I made bold, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to forever abjure the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. Know of your youth, examine well your blood. Whether you yield not to your father's will, you can endure the livery of a nun, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord? Ere, I will yield my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and on the next new moon, the Sealing day betwixt my love and me, for our everlasting bond and fellowship. Upon that day, prepare to either die for the disobedience of your father's will, or wed Demetrius as he would, or on the head's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Smart for Lysander! Sure, he hath my love, and what is mine shall render him. And she is mine, and all my right to her. And I may dispose her whether it be to this gentleman, or to her death. I am, my lord, as well derived as he. As well possessed, my love is more than his. My fortunes every way is fairly ranked, if not with vantage, as Demetrius. And which is more than all these bells can be. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should I not then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head. Made love to Nader's daughter Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess I have heard as much. <laughs> and with Demetrius not that spoke thereof, but my mind overfull with self-affairs did lose it. But Demetrius, come, and Aegeus, come. You shall go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. As to you, fair Hermia, you should look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens used you up, which we, which we may not extenuate, to the death or to a vow of single life. Come, Paul. What cheer, my love? <laughs> Demetrius, Aegeus, go along. With the duty with duty and desire, we shall follow. <laughs> oh no, my love, why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could well, but team them from the tempest of mine eyes. I me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history. The course of true love never did run smooth. But hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, <laughs> may I marry thee? And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the, a league without the town. Why, I did meet thee once with Helena to do an observance of a mortal of men. There, I will wait for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, and the place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly I will meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. Hot speed, fair Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair? That fair galaxy? Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair! Your eyes are lodestone. 
stars, ear, tongue, sweet air, more tunable to lark than shepherd's ear, when wheat is green and hawthorn buds appear. Sickness is catching. Oh, if there were favors, so yours would I catch. Fair Hermia, ere I go, my ear should catch your voice, my eye your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue, sweet melody. Were the world mine, Demetrius being baited, would I give to be you translated? Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you swear the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smile such still. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows the me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Let fault were mine. <sighs> Take comfort, for he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Helen, to your minds we will unfold. Tomorrow, from Catherine's gates, we have devised a plan to steal. <laughs> <laughs> and in the wood, where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet. There, my Lysander and myself will meet. And thence from Athens, turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us. And good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander. We must starve our sight from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. I will, my love. <gasps> <laughs> 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 Helen, that's you. And as you on him, may Demetrius dote on you. How happy summer other some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will only know what all he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, and so I, admiring of his qualities, love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. For ere Demetrius looked upon Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. <sighs> I will go tell of him, of fair Hermia's flight, and then to the wood he will tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it's a dear expense. But I hear in mean I to enrich my pain, to have a sight thither and back again. <laughs> And so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy, and the most cruel death of Pyramus and this. Well, we're going to repeat the work, I assure you. <laughs> and a Mary. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spoon at yourselves! <laughs> Here, Peter Quince. <laughs> you must play Thisbe on you. 
What is a this? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. <laughs> Nay, faith. Let me go play woman. I have a beard coming in. That's so well. You shall play it in a mask. And we speak as small as you. Hey, let me play this, me too. I'll speak in a more a voice. This me, this me. Oh, Pyramus, my lovely beard. I'll fist me dear, lady dear. Ah. <laughs> no, no. You must play Pyramus and flute you fizzy. <sighs> well, proceed. Uh, Robin Starling, the tailor. Robin Starling, the tailor. <sighs> Robin Starling, the tailor. <laughs> You're Peter Quince. He must play Thisbe's mother, myself, Thisbe's father, snug the joiner, you, the lion's part, and I hope here is a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be, give it to me, for I am slow of study. You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roll. Oh, I remember the lion too! Oh, roll so well, there, and that's hard to do to hit me! Oh, roll so well, did you go say, let him roar again! Let him roar again! <laughs> <sighs> if you should do it too terribly, you would fright the Duchess and the ladies, and that were enough to hang us all. That would hang us, every mother's son. I grant you, friends, it is you to fright the ladies out of their wits. They'd have no more discretion but to hang us. Uh, but I will aggravate my voice, so roar you as gently as any sucking dove. <laughs> I'll roar you and twer any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a most gentleman-like man. Therefore, he must needs to play Pyramus. Uh, well, I will entertain. Yes! <laughs> Masters, here are your parts, and I am here to entreat you, to request you, to come to by tomorrow night. We will meet in the palace wood, for if we meet in this city, we will be thought to come in, and have to place this note. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there you rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect, on you. Oh. As you do so, we meet. Thank you. 
over park, over pale, through flood, through fire, I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's fear, and I serve the fairy queen. To do her orbs upon her green, farewell the long spirits, I'll be gone. Our queen and our elves come here and on. The king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight. For Oberon's passing fell in wrath, because it's she as her attendant hath. A lovely boy, stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling. And jealous Oberon would have the child, the knight of his train, to trace the forest wild. But she perforce withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they never greet in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight she. But they do square that all their elves, for fear, Creep into acorn cups and hide them there. <laughs> Either I mistake your sheep and leaping. Right. <gasps> or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite. Good fellow. Are not you he that frights the maidens of the villagery? Those that hobgoblins call you and sweet puck, you do their work and they shall have good luck. Are not, not you he? he? Thou speaks so right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. But room, fairy. Here comes Oberon. And here, my mistress. What did you have gone? <laughs> Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon. Fairies, skip heads. I forswore his bed and company. Cherry rash wanton! Am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. <laughs> Why art thou here, come from the farthest step of India, but that, forsooth, the bouncing Amazon, your buskined mistress and your warrior love to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How can thou thus for shame, Titania, land at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? Didst thou not lead him to the glimmering night of Herodonia, whom he ravished, and have him with fair Aegis break his faith with Ariadne and Antioba? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead, to dance our rivulets to the whistling wind, but with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious falls, which, falling in the land, have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the plowman lost his sweat, the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. No nut is now with him or care blessed, Therefore, the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air, that rheumatic diseases do abound, and thorough this distemperature we see the seasons alter, the spring, the summer, the childing autumn, angry winter, change their wanted liveries. The amazing world by this increase now knows not which is which, and this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changing boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order, and in the spice of Indian air, by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side. But she, being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake, I do rear up her boy, and for her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance an hour round and see our moonlight revels go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare your haunts. Give me the boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. There is a way we will charge out right to my longer stay. Oh, I go thy way then. Thou shalt not in this world till I torment thee for this injury. Go! <laughs> the 
My little puck, come hither, come, come. Hush me that herb, uh, the flower I showed thee once. Maidens call it a uh, love in idleness. The juice of it has the power to make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. <laughs> Fetch me this herb, and be not here again ere the first cock crow. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Having once this herb, I'll watch the tiny when she's asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it bull or monkey, unmeddling monkey or unbustling ape, she will pursue with the soul of love. <laughs> and when I remove the charm from her eyes as I can with a different herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. <laughs> but soft, who comes here? I am invisible. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? Do I not slay, and they slay of me? Thou told me they were stolen into this wood. Hence get thee gone. You draw no more. You hard hearted adamant. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I tell you the plainest truth that I do not know I cannot love you? And for that do I love you the more. Demetrius, <laughs> I am your spaniel, and the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. You to me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, beat me, lose me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. I'll run with thee, and hide me in the brace, and leave thee to mercy. Wild beast! The wild is half such as a heart as yours! <laughs> you will not stay thy questions? Let me go! Or, if thou follow me, do not believe but I shall do thee mischief in the wood! I do! In the town, in the temple, in the field! Bye, Demetrius! You do me mischief! Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We can't fight for love, as men may do. We should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Oh, fare thee well, nymph. Ere he leave this grove, thou shalt fly him. He shall seek thy love. <laughs> Hast thou the flower there? <laughs> and nodding violet blows. Over canopy by luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There is where Titania sleeps some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with some dance and delight. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. <laughs> Take thou some of it. <laughs> Take thou some of it. <laughs> and seek throughout this grove a sweet Athenian lady who was in love with a disdainful youth, anointing his eyes. But do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady that shall know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Infect it with some care, with some care that he may prove more fond of her than she upon her love. And be that here again, and the Leviathan can swim a league. Fear not, my lord. Your servants shall do so. <laughs>
as thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take, be it lynx or cat or bear, hard or boar with bristled hair. In thine eye that shall appear when thou wakest is thy dear. <laughs> Wake when some vile thing is near. <laughs> there are love, you faint with wandering in the wood, and to speak troth, I've forgotten our way. Will rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander. <laughs> Find you out of bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. One turf shall serve us pillow for us both. One bed, one heart, two bosoms, one trove. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off, do not lie so near. Oh, take the sense sweet of my innocence. Love takes the meaning of love's conference. I mean that my heart unto yours is knit, so that one heart we can make of it. Two bosoms interchanged with an oath. So then, two bosoms and a single troth. Then by your side no bedroom me deny, for lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. <laughs> Lysander riddles very prettily. <laughs> now much be true my manners and my pride, if Hermia meant to say Lysander lie. But gentle friend, for the love and courtesy, lie further off in humane modesty. Such separation, as well may be said, becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far be distant, and good night, sweet friend, thy love ne'er alter till thy sweet life end. Amen, amen, and to that fair prayer say I, and then life when I am loyalty. Here is my bed, and may sleep grant thee all his rest. With half that wish, the wisher's eyes be pressed. <laughs>
Lysander near. And, all my powers, address your love and might to honor Helen and be her knight. <laughs> that will never police. First, Pyramus the straw sword and kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? By Lakin, a parlous fear. I believe we must leave the killing off when all is done. And not a Owens. I have a device to make all well. Or well, write me a prologue and have the prologue seem to say, who that will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Paris, but bottom the weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear it, I shall promise you. Masters, <laughs> if you were to bring in God shield us, a lion amongst ladies is truly a most dreadful thing, for there is not more fearful wild fowl than your lion living. We ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell he is not a lion. Nay. We must name his name. Oh, and half his face must be shown to the lion's costume. And he himself must speak through, saying thus, or to the same effect, Ladies, or fair ladies, I would wish you, or I would request you, or I would entreat you not to fear, not to triple, if you think you come hither as a lion, if it were pity of my life. No, I am a man as other men are. And then we will have him name his name and tell them plainly he is Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there's two hard things that is. That is, we must bring the moonlight into the chamber. For if you will know, the two lovers meet by moonlight. Aha! <laughs> 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 Oh, 
sunshine that night. Or else one must come in with a lanthorn in the bush of thorns and see he comes to present, or to this figure, the person of moonshine. Uh, then there is another thing. You must bring a wall in the great chamber. For says the story, did the two lovers talk through the chink of a wall? You can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? <laughs> <laughs> no man or other must present wall. Ooh, unless I have some plaster or some loam. Ooh, or some rough cast about him. Ooh, and we shall tell them plank. No, no. And he will hold his fingers thus, and through this cranny shall pyramids and Disney whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, every curse your hearts. Pyramus, you begin, when you have spoken your speech, and turn to that break, so everyone is according to his cue. What happened at homespuns have we swaggering here? So near the cradle of the fairy queen? What a play toward. I'll be an editor. An actor, too, perhaps. If I see. Bisbee, flowers, odious, savor, sweet. Odorous, odorous. Odor, savor, sweet, so hath thy breath, my dearest Bisbee, dear. But hark, a voice, oh, say thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. A stranger pyramus than e'er play here. <laughs> uh, must I speak now? I, Mary, must you. You must understand that you go see her noise that you heard. You should come again. Most ready and dear. Most ready and dear. <laughs> Most ready and dear. <laughs> Enough to get out of this ward, I'd have, a, I'd have enough to serve my own turn. Out of this 
wood, do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state. And I do love thee, therefore go with me. I will give thee fairies to attend on thee, and I will purge thy mortal grossness, so that thou shalt, like an airy spirit, go. Bees blossom, cobweb, moss, mustard seeds. Ready? And I? And I? And I? Where, Where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and jewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. Nod to him, elves, and do him courtesy. Hail, mortal. Hail. 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 I cry your worship's mercy. Uh, your name, I beseech you. Cobweb. Well, good cobweb, I require you of more acquaintance in the future. Uh, uh, your name, honest gentlewoman. <laughs> Peace blossom. Well, good peas blossom, please commend to Mistress to Mistress Squash, your mother, and to Master Peace God, your father. I require you of more acquaintance as well. Uh, your name, I beseech you. Uh, mustard seed. Well, good mustard seed, I must admit, many of your kindred have made mine, I want her heir now. I require you of more acquaintance as well. Come now, lead into my bower. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Tie up my lover's tongue, bring him silently. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the tongue of you will. Then whence came in her eye, where she must go to find an extremity. <laughs> oh, and here comes my messenger. How oh, now, mad spirit, what that will about this haunted grove? My mistress, with a monster. Is in love! <laughs> Near to her close and consecrated bower, when she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals that were for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse the play. Intended for great Theseus' nuptial day, the shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their forge, forsook his scene and entered during the break, when I did him this advantage take. A nest snowly fixed on his head, anon his thirst be must be answered. And forth my living comes when they can spy, so out of sight, away his fellows fly. I led them on this distracted fear and left sweet Pyramus translated there. When in that moment, so it came to pass, to Tanya wait, and straight away, loved an ass! <laughs> this, this, this falls out better than I could have devised. Oh, but that, tell me, how shall you only see Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that's finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked, of force she must be eyed. Whoa. Stand close, this be the same Athenian! <laughs> this is the woman. But not this the man! Uh, uh, I rebuke you, him that love you so. I press for bitter, I am a bitter foe. Now I but chide, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, bring o'er shoes and blood, plunge in deep, and kill me too! <laughs> It cannot be but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look, and so should I, pierced through the heart of your stern cruelty. You spend your passion on a misprized wound. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, which I did therefore. Fear <laughs> <laughs> pledge never to see me more. And from thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce pain. Therefore, for a while, I will remain. Oh, sit 
swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens looked out fine. But some illusion bring her here, I saw Charmian's eyes against you to appear. I go! I go! Look how I go! <laughs> oh! Swifter than an arrow from Tartar's bow! Flower of this purple dye, hit in Cupid's archery. Sink an apple of thine eye, when his love he doth spy. Make her shine more gloriously than the Venus of the sky. When he wakes, she be by, bank of her remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Show me their fond pageancy. Lord, what fools these mortals be! Turn <laughs> aside, noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once for one, that must need be sport alone. And these things do best please me, that befall preposterously. <laughs> Tears? Look, when I vow, I weep, and thou so born in their nativity, all truth appears. Your vows to her and me, set into scales, will even weigh as both as light as tails. I had no judgment went to her, I swore. Nor none in my mind. Now you give her or. Demetrius loves her and loves not you. <laughs> oh! Helen, <laughs> <Hell laughs> goddess, nymph, perfect, divine. To what, my love, shall I compare thine eye? Crystal is muddy. Oh, how ripe and show thy lips. Those kissing cherries <laughs> tempting grow. <laughs> oh, spite! Oh, hell! I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were men as you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so to vow and swear and super praise my parts. When I am sure you hate me with your hearts. You both are rivals that love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena. You are unkind, Demetrius. <laughs> Be not so, for you love Hermia. This you know, I know. And here, with all goodwill, with all my heart, in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours to Helena, to me bequeath, whom I do love. <laughs> And will do till my no, death. Never to mock your waste for I of breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia. I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart's to her, but his guest wise sojourned. Now, to Helen is home returned. Helen, it is not so. Disparage not the faith thou dost not know, lest to thy peril thou abide dear. <laughs> thou art not thine, my eye, Lysander proud. My ear, I think it led me to thy sound. But why, unkindly, didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love that would not let him by. Fair Helena, who more in gilds the night than all yon fiery O's and eyes of life. Why seekest thou me? Not this make thee know? The hate I bear thee made thee leave thee so. You speak not as you think. That cannot be. No, oh, she is one of this confederacy. Now I received the day of conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, what would, he, would you have these contrived to, to bait me with this foul derision? And what will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not! It seems that you scorn me! Do you not, as in scorn, set Lysander to follow me around and praise my eyes and face? And have you not sent your other love, Demetrius, who even but <laughs> now to burn you with his foot, to call me goddess, goddess. Nymph, nymph, divine, divine. and <laughs> rare? Rare. 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 <laughs> I understand not what you mean by this. I do, for sever, counterfeit sad looks, make vows upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other, keep the sweet chest up, but fare thee well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay gentle, Helena. Here's my excuse, my love, my life. 
I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come. Why, Sandra, where did you catch all this? Oh, hey, must thou catch? Thou bird, vile thing, let loose, I shall shake thee from me like a serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What change is this, sweet love? Thy love? Out, oh, Johnny Jarger, out of love and medicine, a land and potion and. Oh. You're not just yes, so, and so are you. Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I must trust your word. What? Should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me, wherefore? Oh, me, what news, my love? Since night you loved me, but since night you left me, why then you left me? Oh, me, the gods forbid, in earnest, shall I say? By my life, I never did desire to see thee more. Be out of question, of hope, of doubt. Be certain, nothing true, it is no jest. That I do hate thee. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Helena! <laughs> you canker blossom! You thief of the love! What have you come by night and stolen my love? Depart from him! Fire your fate! Have you no modesty? No maiden shame? No touch of bashfulness? What? Will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you coward! You puppy! You!
thy negligence, still thou hast mistakenest, or else committest these knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistrue the not you told me I should know the man by the Athenian garments he had on. Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, therefore, Robin.
from the east that I may be back to Athens by daylight. And sleep in with me. Sleep. That sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye may seal me a while from mine own company. Yet but three, come one more. Two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, curts and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus do make poor females mad. Never so wary, never so in woe, be dabbled with dew and torn with briars. My legs can keep no pace with my desires. Here will I rest me till the break of day. Have a shield, Lysander, if they mean a prey. On the ground, sleep sound, I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover remedy. When thou wakes, thou wakes, true delights in the sight of thy former lady's eye. Jack shall have Jill, naught shall go ill, the man shall have his mare again, and, and all shall be well. Tickle me, I must scratch. It saves me love without no desires to eat. Ooh, truly a peck of provender. I could munch a good dry oat. Ooh, or perhaps a bottle of hay. Good hay. <laughs> Sweet hay. Oh, hath no fellow. But have you people not stir me? For I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be always away. <laughs> so doth the woodbine, the sweet honeysuckle, <laughs> gently entwist the female ivy so, and rings the barky fingers of the elf. Oh, how I love thee! Oh, how I dote on thee! <sighs> ah, welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her daughters now I do begin to pity, for beating her late behind this wood, seeking sweet favors for this hateful fool, I did upbraid her and fall out with her. Well, at my pleasure, I, I tormented her, and she, in mild terms, begged for my patience. I then asked her her changing child, and drink she gave me, and sent her fairy to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now I have the boy. And now I will release this hateful imperfection in her eyes. And, gentle cook, remove the transformer's cup off the Athenian swing, that, awakening when the others do, all to act is back again repair. And think no more of tonight's accidents, but as the fierce vexations of a dream. But first, I shall release the fairy queen. <laughs> be as thou wast wont to be. See as thou wast wont to see. Diane's bottle, Cupid's flower, hath such strong force and blessed power. 
Now, my Tanya, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon, <laughs> what visions I have seen. Methought, <laughs> methought I was enamored of an ass. <laughs> There lies your love. <laughs> oh, how came these things to pass? Oh, how might I still love this visage now? <laughs> uh, silence a while, Robin. Uh, take off his head. To Tanya, music call. <laughs> music how music, such as charm and sleep. When now wakest. Now thou and I are in new amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance at Dupeace's house triumphantly. <laughs> Fairy king, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. Come, my love. And in our flight, tell me how it came this night that I, sleeping here, was found with these mortals on the ground. Uh, uh, sound! Music! Come, my queen, take hands of me. Let's rock the ground where these sleepers be. <laughs> Oh, Netta 
Empress Helena, what do you think of them being here together? Well, no doubt they came to observe the rite of May, and hearing our intents came in grace of our solemnity. But speak, isn't this the day that Hermia should give her answer of choice? It is, my lord. Good morrow, friends! St. Valentine's has passed. Begin these woodbirds but to couple now. <laughs> Pardon, my lord. I pray you all, stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this little concord in the world? My lord, I shall reply amazedly. Half sleep, half waking, but as yet I swear, I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I think, for truly I would speak, and now I do bethink me, so it is. I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to flee from Athens where we might, without the peril of Athenian law. And enough, enough, my lord, you've had enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. I do a say on to Demetrius. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, and I in fury hither followed them, fair Helena the fancy following me. But, my good lord, my love for Hermia, melted as the snow, seems to me now as the remembrance of an idle god, which in childhood I did dote upon, and all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object and the pleasure of mine eye, is only Helena. To her was I betrothed the ere I saw her. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. In the temple by and by, these couples shall be eternally knit. And we will all to temple three and three hold a great feast in this solemnity. <laughs> oh, come, Hippolyta! <laughs> <laughs> these things seem small and undistinguishable, like far off mountains turned into clouds. Methinks I see things with the parted eye when everything seems double. So methinks I have found Demetrius like a jewel. Mine own and not mine own. Are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Yea, and my father. And Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow to the temple. Why, then we are awake. Let's follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. <laughs>
such antique fables or, or fairy toys. Such tricks have strong imaginations. It would apprehend some joy is to comprehend the bringer of that joy. In the night imagining some fear, how easy is a bush supposed to bear? But all the stories of the night told over and their minds transfigured so together, more witness of the vast images and grows to something of great constancy. Hmm. <laughs> oh, and here come the lovers, the little joy and mirth. Joy! Joy to the friends and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. More than to us, fight in your royal walks, your boards and your beds. <laughs> uh, come now, come, come. What masks, what dances shall we have to wear away the three long hours between our after supper and our bedtime? <laughs> what accompaniment shall we have? Uh, Titty's brief scene of young Pyramus and his lover Thisbe. Very tragical mirth. Tedious, brief? Tragical in birth, this is most wondrous ice and most hot, strange snow. A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, and that is as brief as I know to play. But by ten words, it is too long, which makes it tedious. <laughs> and I mean, Pyramus there and I'll kill himself. But in all the play, there is not one word apt, not one player fitted. And I must confess, my lord, when I saw rehearse, made mine eyes water. But more merry tears. Who are they that play it? Some hard handed man from Athens here. No, then we will hear it. No, my lord, I have seen it over, and it is nothing. I will hear it. Go, go, bring them in. Ladies, <laughs> to your places. He says they can do nothing in his kind. The kind of way to thank them for that nothing. <laughs> So, Your Grace, <laughs> the prologue is addressed. Let them approach. <laughs> Lion's vile, bloody mouth that stained. 
a man comes curious, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Disby's mantle slain. Rats with blade, and bloody playful blade, he bravely broaches boiling bloody breast. And Disby, tearing a low by his his dagger drew, and died. <laughs> For all the rest, let land, wall, and moonshine, and lovers twain, at large discourse, oh, here they do remain. <laughs> I wonder if lion be to speak. No wonder, my lord, a lion may when many asses do. <laughs> In this same interlude, it doth befall that I want to start like by name, present a wall, and such a wall as I would have you think that had in it a credit hole or chink through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often, very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, and this tone doth show that I am that same wall. The truth is so, and this the cranny is right and sinister through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you require a lime and hair to speak better? <laughs> it is the wittiest partition that ever I heard discourse, my lord. A pyramid draws on the wall. Silence. Shh, shh. Oh, night, which ever art when day is not. Oh, night, with you so black. Oh, night, oh, night. Alack, alack, alack. And thou, a wall, oh sweet and lovely wall, who sat between a father's round and mine. It's you, O oh wall, O oh sweet and lovely wall. Show me thy cheek for me to hold mine eye. <laughs> Thank you, old shield shield thee well for this. <laughs> but what's the eye? No sins be do I see. Oh curse! <laughs> curse be thy stones for thus deceiving me. The wall methinks being sensible should curse again. <laughs> no, sir, you should not. Uh, deceiving me is his cue, she's to enter now. Oh, oh. Ewa. <laughs> oh, love! Oh, love, dearest thou who in my moans, for pardon my fair bringers of me, my lips for kissed thy stones, thy stones with lime and hair, it's up in me. Oh, I see your voice, now will I to the chink. I be your love. Oh, kiss me through the hole in this vile wall. Kiss the wall's hole. Wilt thou at any soon meet me straightway? Time lies, time death. I come without delay. <sighs> 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 <sighs>
shining out so bright, for by thy gracious, golden, glittering gleams, I trust to take of truest Thisbe sight. But stay, O oh spite, what mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here? Eyes, do you see? How can this be? O oh dainty duck, O oh dear, O oh thy mantle good, what a stain with blood! Oh, approach ye furies fell. O oh, fates, come, come, cut thread and thrum, quail, crush, conclude, and quell. This passion and the death of a dear friend is enough to make a man look sad. Be sure in my heart that I pity the man. Mm. Oh, wherefore nature this self live frame? Well, I while hath here to flower, my dear, which is no, no. Which was the first name that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer? Oh, come tears confound, come sword and wild, the path of fear must. Ah, 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 the left path where heart doth hum. Oh, thus I eye, thus, thus. Oh, <laughs> 
would it please you to see the applause? No, no, I pray you leave the No, I don't. Because you're playing these no excuse. Leave your epilogue alone, please! <laughs> Shall restore amends. 